Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Metalhead's Manifesto. I'm Kai, I'm here again with Makai. We're here to do another live reaction to a video on YouTube about a game this time. Well, I guess the last one was about a game, too, wasn't it, technically? Yeah, technically. So, so we're basically live reacting to game opinions at this point, it seems like. Um, it's not a bad place to miss. be episode 12 for mm -hmm. those that have been keeping up with what number we're on and uh that means 12 weeks of podcast man or like yeah literally 12 weeks that's crazy yeah go and play if you count it that way yeah if you count it that way um so this time we're getting into some wow stuff that makai has had a little bit of experience in and i've had a couple of expansions worth of time uh dealing with over the course of their introduction mm -hmm. and seeing what um what's the name of the channel here that we're looking at Oh, hold on. I'll find out. Um, it is Automatic Jack. Okay. So we're going to be looking at Automatic Jack's opinion about, I guess, Mythic Pluses and mm -hmm. the current War Within landscape. Yeah, it's um, the video title is Blizzard needs to rethink Mythic Plus in the War Within. So, so now I, I've seen some horrendous Mythic Plus stuff before War Within, so we'll see uh, if he mentions anything from Battle for Azeroth or not, because if he doesn't, then. Uh, I mean, you always can, so. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you're ready for us to get into this thing, we can get into it and see what he's got to say, see yeah. what we think about it. We will. I mean, like, well, you already know kind of what I think about the Mythic Plus system right now, I think, but we will get into it as we go through the show. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's yeah, Jack. Go. Going into the War Within, they made really big changes to Mythic Plus and Challenger's Peril being one of them. I think they really have missed the mark in terms of what they're actually kind of doing to the player base in the process. So in Dragonflight, there were a lot of times, especially Season 3 and Season 4, running with some of the Exodia comps that you had. And he starts right with Dragonflight. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Which is always a nice way to go. Like there were a lot yeah, of times, were. especially season three and season four, running with some of the Exodia comps that you had there, you could really like steamroll keys up into pretty high levels without really respecting a lot of the dungeon mechanics. And so, as they even write right here, they want Challenger's Peril to emphasize precise play and greater risk on player decisions as they progress through higher keystone levels. So they say, hey, we want to give you some breathing room, you know, not make it as punishing, but we still want this initial goal of precise play to come into effect. Now, the issue is that in Dragonflight, you didn't have this penalty and you could rack up like 20 something deaths in certain dungeons and still time it, which felt really weird for a timed event, especially with runbacks involved. As in Albion, no matter what you do or what you do, mother <laughs> Well, we're going to use his ad for me to comment a little bit about uh what he was saying there a little bit yes in dragonflight you could have a lot of deaths and still complete the relatively high keys but they took in a lot from shadowlands and made it where people that weren't in the top 20 percent could do this stuff and that was their goal then in Battle for Azeroth, it was horrendously bad. Worse than it is right now in terms of the affixes and stuff we have to deal with. And very experimental. Okay. Um, I see. So, Isn't it bad for a company that's been making the same game for um, many, many, many years to be doing experimental shit? Or shouldn't it be now down by this point, honestly speaking? Well, from what I was talking about, Battle for Azeroth was when this started getting big with Mythic Plus. So okay. that's where the experimental concept uh, of that yeah. comes in. But um, you're right. At this point, it should be at a position to where it should, they should just be able to say, we're going to use this system, figure out what rules we're going to go with for the season, and people should be able to do it and be all right with it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, no, I... I agree. I mean, like, any game that's been that's been being made for 20-odd years should honestly be nailed down by this fucking point. Like, it's a no-brainer. Like, the fact that, like, WoW doesn't have a nailed-down system that they know that works and is, like, what the player base wants by now is absolutely horrendous to me in terms of game design and as a company, as a game as a whole, and, you know. 
Yeah, and uh, when you think about it more from, we'll get back to him in here in just a second, though, mm-hmm. but when you think about it more from the landscape of the player base, the player base is older now, most of it. I mean, we still get a lot of the kids that still come in and play that are more adept in computer games than us in our 30s are because they grew up with the technology. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of us are older now. We don't have the time to commit to... Uh, learning a very, uh, as they say, their uh, precise play system. Um, I can be considered hypocritical with that because there's a lot of precise play in something we'll talk about at a future date that we're experiencing. But yeah. it's a little bit different uh, execution in that precise play than what we're seeing with uh, currently in Mythic Plus before within, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what they're doing. If you talk, like, depends what you're considering as precise play. But like you said, we'll get into it. I think I will make two some comp- some comparisons in this to what you're already experiencing in that game you're thinking of as well. Once mm-hmm. we get through this video, but yeah, let's see what this dude has to say before. Yeah, so that, we that's start talking talk. a lot of shit. Dragonflight. Yeah. You didn't have this penalty, and you could rack up like twenty something deaths in certain dungeons and still time it, which felt really weird for a timed event especially with runbacks involved as well. But a lot of people really enjoyed being able to kind of like steamroll keys up until they got into a high level. The problem was that you would have a really huge mix of players where you didn't really understand if this person with this IO or this person with the same IO actually knew the dungeon mechanics. And so what they've built in the War Within is like this big wall, especially at 12s, where the health, the damage are all really high, which makes the players have to be even better at their classes, even better at their specs, really in order to make it over this wall, in order to really progress. What I will say, this is him speaking about that, is like, as like a new player perspective, because like, um, The War Within was my first um, expansion of WoW in like a very long time. Like yeah. the, just the getting into like the like level, the, like the first key, you know, before you ever get into like timing them and stuff. That wall mm-hmm. when we first started, that was so much to get through. Like, say, like, if you're a brand new player, like, the oh, actual yeah. knowledge of knowing your character to be able to do that, it's, like, it's a gigantic jump. Like, you literally have to go into raids before you go into mythics at this point, which is, I don't think that's how a system should work, in my opinion, but still. Well, especially since they wanted the Mythic Plus system to be a thing that people could do alternatively to do in raids without having to do raids in the first place. That was the primary objective for mythic plus to be in existence is for people that maybe only knew five people could go and do what would be considered in-game content without having to do the raid yep where as you've seen requires far more people with a lot more personalities than what really needs to exist in an mmo in my opinion yeah but that's and, another topic and too the wow later. community is very toxic as well so just from what i've experienced like um the wow community is not the nicest to be around so the fact that like, it exists as a good thing, because you don't have to be around as much toxicity, generally speaking, from, like, mythics into it. Obviously, it depends on the people that you're playing with, and from, like, randoms mm-hmm. to people you know, and, you know, there's a lot of variables in that. But at the same time, yeah. it's, like, the world community, for me anyway, it's not a community that I like being around. Like, you know, in terms of, like, people to play with, or that kind of way. So. No, and, uh, but like you said about the fact that if you look at the design choice that they wanted they wanted like i said mythic plus to be a substitution content for raiding for people that wanted to do that yeah but with the current framework with uh and he'll probably go into it in this video at least i hope he does mm-hmm. that m zeros now cost or well a plus one key is basically a 10 now essentially from what yeah. it used to be in the old days there's no content between heroic and mythic to get you ready for that jump without going into the raids yeah. So they kind of force the issue because the raids is the only thing that's going to give you the uh, education that you need for your class that you might not. I mean, because you run heroics and half yeah. the things don't even get to hit you before they're dead half the time. Pretty much. And I mean, that's even when to, you're to not fair, geared. They might, be, they might be thinking that delving is the between mythic and I mean between heroic and mythic, basically. But even delves don't no. get you prepared for anything that mythic has to offer. Like, in terms of, like, how you need to move your character, how to work as a group, like, that doesn't exist really in... It does to a degree, but not really in terms of, like, um, Dalvin. Well, 
according to Ian, which is one of the production leads, Delves were supposed to be for the people that had no one to play with. So that's not even, from what their design choices, that's not even applicable to either of the other two. It's supposed to be an option for solo players to be able to do things without having to rely on anyone at all. That's Which I don't see how you can do that with some of the classes. Like, I don't know how you do high-level delves realistically with a healer, but I guess, just you, so much I guess you just don't in that respect. I guess, like, there isn't an easy way to do shit in, like, um, well, that's an example. So, like, obviously, like, you can do, like, the normal game content very easily. You can go from normal into heroic. That's very easy. But like you said, that step mm. up from heroic into mythic is just, it's a little bit too far of a jump and you have to raid in between, which is, I don't know. Like I said, it feels like bad game design, but still, anyway, let's see what he has to say more. ...their class is even better at their specs, really in order to make it over this wall, in order to really progress. But because of the infinite nature of spamming Mythic Plus, where as long as you can find a keystone, you can just keep on playing the game, you don't really have that improvement that Blizzard's trying to force upon the player base. You kind of just have people smashing face into the dungeons. And as players continue to improve, they also get a lot more exclusive. So way back in Legion, when Mythic Plus first came around. Fuck's sake. Oh, this dude put so yeah. many ads on his video. I doubt mm. we'll get... We'll, uh, let, let, let's let's uh, make a bet. Or not really a bet, because I don't want to lose. Uh, I'm going to say he's going to have five before it's over. Um, we are two minutes in, and he's had two already. So, what I'm assuming is that he put an ad every minute. So, I'm assuming we're going to get around 15 ads on this video. Oh my god, I hope not. If he did, I'm going to switch to a different thing where I get a block put stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just because like that's obnoxious as fuck so yes anyways legion when mythic plus first came around on na there was a pretty vibrant discord community that was really looking to like get people together to start doing mythic plus dungeons and then over time that community basically just fell apart because people started getting more and more exclusive before the it is insane it really came along people realized that there was you know a handful of the total player base that they could progress into the highest dungeons and so it became more about getting onto people's friends lists and getting into that networking to find those elite groups to continue sort of progressing. Now, that kind of got broken up into a bunch of different tiers, not just in the 0.1%, but also in like the 1%, where people would very rarely want to like pug somebody. They very rarely want to pug somebody, only kind of play with their friends, and more people started kind of shifting to that over time. This is kind of what's happening right now in the War Within Season 1, from what I've seen, mm -hmm. is that dungeons over 12 are having not huge amounts of people looking around in groups in LFG, and you're having a lot of players really just getting like slammed at that 12 level. And it might change a little bit thanks to this challenger's peril affix. But I think a lot of people get like really hard gated at the 12 because of the jump up in difficulty. And the fact that the game does... To be fair, the fact he's talking about 12s mostly. Like a lot of people get gated at the 6s, never mind the 12s. Man, well, that 6s is a jump as well. No, you get up to 5 and it's fine. That 6s is a jump. Then obviously I imagine that 12 is a jump. As well. like, it's like that jump again. So, Yeah, the 12 that he's mentioning is when uh, we get this affix, I believe, that he's really taught, what, the one he's highlighting here on his screen. Uh, because that's something that happens every week. It's 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 uh, perpetual. It never goes away. Yeah. But but he's already did the one thing that I think I've already mentioned to you in the past too about talking about the point one percent or yeah. the one percent. Yeah, he's talking so, about the very highest level of content. He's not talking about it from a general mm -hmm. trying to get into Mythic Plus, but we can get into that anyway. But I guess we're going to see... Because mm -hmm. I guess people who are high-level content people will only talk about high-level content, if that makes sense. Let's know. Challenger Peril Affix, but I think a lot of people get like really hard-gated at the 12 because of the jump up in difficulty and the fact that the game doesn't really teach you how to get better. There's three main factors that you really have to balance in Dungeons Over 12s. That's doing enough damage, especially with the tank nerfs that were kind of put in in this expansion. 
tanks don't live forever they have incredible tankiness but you know when i play with vdh there's times where if the pack doesn't die in x amount of time as we're trying to do a pull that he will just melt right or he has to be forced to kite or something along those lines the damage checks get really high especially as you start ramping up in keys over 12. the healing checks ramp up very quickly as i'm sure a lot of you have noticed from our channel especially when you're pugging in cast go through and the third factor is the crowd control element and so all of these things really get pushed upon you as you go into higher level dungeons and i would argue since the war within has put together or actually dragonflight to be honest has put together all these talent nodes we have more abilities really than ever before that we have to take advantage of you have things like kick obviously but it used to be that healers didn't actually have kicks you know you have all of the crowd control thunderstorm stuns you have a variety of dispel formats that you have to master and a lot of these are not new but having all of these together is also having blizzard balance around having all of these things for example i know this is hps logs but the range is really what i want to highlight for some of these warcraft log statistics is that you know you'll see specs like this priest have incredibly wide ranges things like totemic shaman have widely been viewed as easier to play so they have a little bit of a smaller range but we never really get data to show the range with which people use their kicks their stuns their interrupts their defensives there's not these statistics on oh, these things but it really only takes you there's a reason for that in WoW specifically. You've, as you've seen, uh, WoW is a um, it's a five-person party game for most all content involving a group, mm -hmm. which means yeah. that the healer is supposed to, for the most part, just take on the role of keeping the group alive. If your healer has to do interrupt because the rest of your group isn't either able to or won't do the interrupts and they had to give them the healers for healers to do them that is not a good uh Certainly. situation for the player base to be in i mean because... just from our own experiences like we've all had to do the interrupts you know because obviously you need an x amount per bit that you're in as an example in necrotic wake in that one little bit going along the bridge you need to have perfect interrupts otherwise it throws mm -hmm. off the entire you know that one little part of the dungeon yes it, it, it could cause the entire run to end right there in yep. certain keys because of this the time it takes for that death and re and coming back yeah um but there's no reason because just given the example you just gave necrotic wake was a shadowlands dungeon and healers didn't really have a whole mess of interrupts back then either uh, at this point in time in WoW in the game, there's only one healer that does not have a single interrupt, and that's a Holy Priest. That's interesting. That's the only one. And that's why they're never taken usually in the high keys is because they do not have an interrupt. Oh, that's interesting. But the Holy Priest is the most powerful healer, right? It can be. I mean, if you look at his chart there, it's the uh, second white one down, so it's not horrendously bad. Because if you look at the breakdown of it, it's kind of at least on par with most of the upper tier in some capacity. Yeah. With that evoker, obviously, is going to be the better one because that's the one they're pushing right now. Mm -hmm. But it's not much behind the paladin at all. And that's, and it's not even much behind his cousin being the discipline priest, which does have an interrupt. And that's probably why that they're better is because they have the fucking interrupt. Yeah, I mean, then I know interrupts are important, but they make them that influential to be like where you won't take a whole class into a dungeon because it doesn't have an interrupt is absolutely insane. I would say, as like yeah, because they uh, as like game design right. and mechanics and everything goes like we've already said like throughout this entire thing like there's a reason why right now WoW doesn't feel very good in terms of its end game design anyway. But still, no. I got a little blinded by it at first and thought it was okay, but then the more I saw of it. I uh, started changing my opinion. Yeah, because I mean, I okay. I do in, I did enjoy the mythic, the, you know, mythic content, or like I do enjoy mythic content, but it's the I can see why it's not where it's meant to be. Like I can see it's not quite in the right space that it's meant to, it needs to be. In. Yeah. Light for yeah. some of these Warcraft log statistics is that you know you'll see specs like this priest have incredibly wide ranges. Things like totemic shaman have widely been viewed as easier to play, so they have a little bit of a smaller range. But we never really get data to show the range with which people use their kicks. Their
Pink's a great idea. Fox. So oh, I'm gonna fuck. Make... Son of a bitch. I'm going to switch to a different browser. Hold on. <laughs> Give me a sec. I'm going to have to mess yeah, with, some, with um, some stuff. Give me a second. Everybody, while he's getting that going, those that aren't on hey, video on, with guys? this, that are on the potentially the Spotify side of things, we can't get through a minute and a half of this damn video without having an ad. So we'll be back with you here in just a few minutes with the rest of this whole little discussion. But I mean, in the VOD, nobody now, will, see, will see the show. No, it's only Hunter who has to suffer through this. <laughs> I know. But in case this part gets left in for me to tell them, I'm just telling them that there's, yeah. a, there's a thing. I got gotcha. you. I'm, I'm trying to do what I think is right, damn it. <laughs> what you think is right. Oh yeah, I gotta change anyway. this one. I gotta change um Oh no, I don't know which one's which. Um um, um, um. <laughs> you don't know which Because I've got two like there we go. That should be all yeah, that one. Okay. Okay, there we go. I put it on to brave now, so hopefully there will be no ads. Okay, let's see what let's see what we get here. Okay. Yo, hold on. My whole like, the whole backdrop went. Give me a second. I don't oh, know. Why no. it, I don't know why it went. All it falling went. apart. Yep. We're dying. No, it's um. There you go. That's it. I figured out the button. I needed to switch what kind of render I wanted to use. Okay. All right, let's go. They have a little bit let's of a smaller back. range, but we never really get data to show the range with which people use their kicks, their stuns, their interrupts, their defensives. There's not these statistics on these things, but it really only takes you pugging a couple of times to realize that there is an incredibly massive delta between people who are using those abilities and people who are not. And since Blizzard designs the game around them regardless, you can have some enormously frustrating experiences. Just like in our previous videos where we've talked about the Damn, problem that transition with was Dragonflight pretty being based off of having so many defensives that you basically have to have a defensive up for every major mechanic in order to survive. So too is I think I've got Kyra over this dude's face for the, the most part of this video. Control <laughs> but still. to get added over time. Mm. Having more resources than ever to unlock all these abilities also means that Blizzard wants to challenge players and make it so that they have to use every single ability in order to make sure you're having more successful runs or just about, or having like almost all the people taking advantage of those things. And what you really have noticed over time is that there's not a really good way for the game to teach people how to utilize these mechanics. For example, we have like the Exile's Reach as new players are sort of getting into the game. But since well, seeing as he's mentioning that, like as we know, like uh, we are switching to Final Fantasy XIV right now. And one thing that game does better than almost any other MMO I've ever seen is it actually has things to teach you what the mechanics do. You know, it literally has things that teach you every single thing that you need to know as you slowly work mm -hmm. your way through the content. So yeah. Which WoW does not do. It would, so. not, it would not be difficult to implement something like that into WoW. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, the proof of that, just to kind of go into it for, since you brought it up, I mean, 14 even added a bonus version of the education system to teach you the more sophisticated uh, marker system that they have. Yeah. That wasn't in there the last time I played the game about two years ago. That's interesting. So, I mean, it, it shows they're always striving to improve their player base to, to be to show their new players how to play the game properly and to make sure they know what's happening. And because yeah. those things you can always refer to, it's not just like you know one and done. You can always go back and look at that system and to see what it does. Even if you don't quite understand it, you can go back and play it as many times as you need to to get it in your head to make it work. And a lot of that comes from uh, the concept that Yoshi and his team they never consider that game done or perfect they they know there's always something that can be fixed in some way yeah but um, then again like wow, 14 or sort of expects you to like um it also makes you go through every single campaign it makes you, it, it puts you through every system that it has in the game whereas wow just expects you to skip every system till you get to the war within and then you know that's where the game truly stops you now you need to get to levels um 70 before you get anywhere so yeah you know Anyways, let's see what he's talking about. Yeah, that's good. In order to make sure you're having more successful runs, or just about, or having like almost all the people 
taking advantage of. Need to stop touching his microphone, man! Holy shit! You really have noticed over time. It's really distracting. It's a really good way for the game to teach people how to utilize these mechanics. For example, we have like the Exiles Reach as new players are sort of getting into the game, but since it's not involved in endgame content, a lot of people were just kind of skipping ahead, boosting ahead, and then just progressing on throughout the regular game. I'd also argue since delves have existed, they've sort of made a progression path more focused towards casual players and the mythic plus and like raid environments are really focused towards what i would call competitive players like i think in general a lot of casual players are going to play the game a lot they might even play as much as competitive mythic plus or competitive raid players might but their emphasis is going to be not so much on let me push out i think he's talking bullshit personally speaking as somebody who is a casual mmo player he's talking complete bullshit but you know <laughs> he's using the term competitive player to avoid saying what he really it should be saying people he who can't suck he's trying about, to, he, he's you, trying no. he, he's trying to say people who can't play the game public potentially no so, no he, he he deliberately used the word casual right yep he used the word casual and he did not and elected not to use the other alternate term being hardcore player base he, uh, yeah, he, yeah. he substituted it with uh competitive yeah because if he says it's a hardcore player base that's doing these things, then it automatically makes it to where that that's in the top twenty percent of people. I mean, he. I mean, this whole video is basically in the top twenty percent of people, no matter what you do, right? Because he. Yes, cause but it, he's trying. To, yeah. In my opinion, to avoid saying those key words that mm. most game players know. Yeah. Uh, what they mean. I got you. But to be fair, even by saying look competitive players, even if you don't say the hardcore player base, what you're really saying is that, like, you just don't, like, you know, the people who are, so like the 80% who play the game without getting into that high level content, or even want to get into that high level content, but just can't quite get, but just can't quite find their way in. Like, imagine if yeah. I didn't join Rob well with you and the, and the girl, and I tried to do it by myself. How stuck would I, would I be? How hard would it be for you, me as a new player to get into that type of content? You would have gotten... You would have gotten nowhere fast. Exactly. Fucking moth has returned again. Mm-hmm. I see. But yeah, he's a returning guest on the stream. That's always the yeah, 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 he is. They might even play as much as competitive Mythic Plus or competitive raid players might, but their emphasis is going to be not so much on let me push out as much damage, as much healing, as much whatever. They still want to improve their gear, right? But there's a different mindset that they have going on. And as a result, I don't think that's quite true, kind of okay. diverge those player bases a little bit more when it comes to gear progression. In my opinion, it seems like the changes they've been making to Mythic Plus has been that they feel more comfortable adding on more difficulty into these dungeons, just like how the raid devs are consistently making raids more challenging. And I think <laughs> Nerevar Palace is a really good example of how the raids have gotten steadily more difficult over time. So while we're well into the season right now, I think what we're really going to be looking for is how the difficulty of dungeons continues to sort of branch out and one of the largest levels of difficulty is just finding a group to begin with that can press their buttons well and i think the more that you're having the continuous sort of bloat with lots of cooldowns lots of crowd control lots of defensives the wider of a range of players that you're really going to be experiencing and it's also going to start, I believe, turning people off to the game when they start feeling like their progression gets stopped. Now, you might have an entire wide range of player base, and then, you know, you have a fraction of people who are doing 15s and up right now, a little bit larger of a chunk here that's doing 12s, and then you kind of have, like, the rest of the player base. But what you forget is we're naturally increasing an item level every single week, probably for the next, like, month and a half until people start getting close to BIS. And as a result, as people get closer to BIS, they're naturally going to progress further in towards 12. Can you just say best in slot and not BIS? That's kind of a weird, like... You're not meant to say acronyms as BIS, if that makes sense. Like, it's that way when you type it. It's not meant to be that way when you say it. Just saying. But yeah, um... <laughs> what was I going to say? Um... I know what he's talking about. Like, you know, he's thinking, like, you know, those, like, say, like, the... It's almost like he's trying to say, like, the more casual player base is in, like, the 1 to 12, then you've got the more hardcore that's in the 12 plus, and even more hardcore in the 16 plus, is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. I can agree to that to a degree, but as we've already said, this is part of the player base, I would imagine, who can't, can't, who can't even get over that hurdle to get into Mythic Plus to begin with, potentially. I don't know how true that is, but 
Just what I feel. I mean, I, I think. it depends on what you quantify as getting into, because I don't count getting into Mythic Plus until you've gotten a past four at least. I would like, say you can I would do say up to just four, getting probably. into the Mythic one to three. I would say in terms of getting into potentially. Um, I could see it being a little bit more lenient getting to the third plus on Mythic Plus. It's everything beyond that that the gap starts to widen by a significant margin. Yeah. I mean, like, I was, like, able to, like... Because, like, even in WoW, like, just, like, the simple things, like, trying to find a class takes a very long period of time. So, say, if you're starting the ball within at a certain point, if you need to find that class, and you need to go mm -hmm. through, what, does WoW have, like, 12, 15 classes, wherever it's, like, a lot of classes, right? That's... Mm -hmm. Not too awful many, actually. It's the specs the classes have that make it different. No, I think no, but it's um, also the leveling up to get there, so you can't just have one character. Yeah. And then go between yeah. each class. You have to make 12 plus fucking characters and level each one up in order to even try the classes to begin with, which I don't know. Because like, you can't try them in like a level 10 to 20 experience. You know, like, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't tell you what they're going to play like once you get to endgame. So you have to get all the way to right. endgame and try it. Get up to get your gear up to heroic, get your gear up to mythic level. And then you might potentially enjoy the class where you might hate it. And then you'll have to retry. And I don't know. Yeah. And then somebody would be the one to say that you get around that by doing the one thing that you really... I don't think you should have to do in an MMO really myself when it comes to picking what you want to play. But some people say, well, just do the research before you make your decision. But yeah, but I, don't I can't know that do that, the research in terms of like, I know what they're saying. Yeah. I, under I understand, but I mean, at the same time, like doing research is one thing, knowing how something feels when you specifically play it, it's a whole other thing that happens. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, perfect example of that. I mean, uh, I could tell you how to i mean with the stuff that we've been through already mm -hmm. i mean it's been proven this way anyway i can tell you exactly let's use new bar palace since we're talking about wow for the moment i can tell you and have told you what the fights are and what they consist of from the opening door to the end of the place but it yeah. does you no good for me to tell you that unless you see it in action yeah I agree. It's like it's one thing to st to be told about it. It's another thing entirely to do it and to experience it and to not die in the process of learning it. So yeah. So, or yeah. have somebody else mess it up for you and you don't know if it might have been you or not. That, that that's yeah. the thing too. That's true. I feel like um this specific video is talking at like too much of the higher level problems with Mythic Plus rather than the main issues with Mythic Plus. I would say. We have a fraction of people who are doing 15s and up right now. A little bit larger of a chunk here is doing 12s. And then you kind of have like the rest of the player base. But what you forget is we're naturally increasing an item level every single week, probably for the next like month and a half until people start getting close to BIS. And as a result, as people get closer to BIS, they're naturally going to progress further in towards 12s. But because the wall is going to be so high with doing 12s, the execution checks are going to be so high, mm. it's going to be a real bear, I think, for a lot of players who want to have steady progression and to be able to continuously overcome things, which is a positive for having a slower gearing process. It's also going to be a negative if the wall itself is so large and the game doesn't do enough to really prepare you for what you're going to experience. For strong players, they're going to continuously look inwards, look towards their friends list, look towards networking, and be less willing to take on unknown people. And for people trying to rise through the groups, well, there's just going to be less groups available doing those 12s, 13s, and onwards, in my opinion, than we've seen previously. That's probably my biggest concern, is that when oh. they rise up with that difficulty, players are sort of adapting in a variety of different ways. And part of that is you making sure you have really quality control checks as to who you're bringing. <laughs> Damn. You okay, that guy? Yeah. Had something got in my throat. You're fine. I don't know what. Mm. That was painful. Oh, I can imagine. It looked it. Sorry about that, everybody. Mm, uh, fine. It happened. That's why live podcasting is like a thing, because like, you never know what the fuck's going to happen at this point. Yeah. Oh, God damn. 
I think I got it. Maybe. I'm going to wait until. Sorry. <laughs> I yeah. will try and, cu and cut this out if I remember. That's all. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Mm. It's all good. You good? To go. I, I think so. Yeah. That when they rise up with that difficulty, players are sort of adapting in a variety of different ways. And part of that is making sure you have really quality control checks as to who you're bringing in with your team, becoming more exclusive. Did he just say quality c control checks as to who you bring in to, into your team? Did this yeah. motherfucker really just say that? Of like yeah, and you know all the words he could have used, man. Holy shit. Um, yeah, you know what that means? That means that you just can't take uh, Joe Blow off the street in there because he might not be able to do it because his stuff ain't high enough. Or he might not know it. And you don't want to teach it to him. But then again, like, we're also not talking about the player base who pays to go through fucking high level mythics and high level raids in order to get their gear inflated. Yeah. Who don't know the mechanics anyway, but they could have like they could be close to like best in slugger and just no no mechanics and just absolutely like bomb at everything they do. So like it's uh, yeah. it's just one of those things, isn't it? I don't know. It just feels like when I listen to people talk about games in this way, it just like makes me think like it shows me like what kind of player they are, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. And this guy, he's a I mean, he's a wild player, so he's already got a ingrained version of the mindset that they use anyway yeah being if you're not better than if you're not as good as me you're not good enough and that's that's the general baseline for most people yeah i think like wow it's very much like i said it's based in toxicity it's not based in the place of learning or in the place of helping other players get through stuff in italy because I, cause I, how else do you teach new players how to do stuff? Because if the new player base can't learn this stuff or can't get to high enough content, then guess what? The new player base is going to leave. And then once that new player base leaves, it will just be left with declining numbers. Yeah. So. Anyways, let's keep going. Let's see what he's talking about. Part of that is making sure you have really quality control checks as to who you're bringing in with your team becoming more exclusive and that's really where you've seen a lot of the issue with the invite protests that we had a couple weeks ago was that people didn't feel like they were getting invited now part of that is definitely related to spec balance and how much damage specs do where some specs are just absolutely crushing others which naturally makes doing high keys significantly easier if you just kill off everything fast enough you need less kicks less defensives all of that but it also is going to be relating it to how willing are people to try new players out or try players out when, hey, this one person has significantly higher eye level. OK, we're just going to be able to bring them in. We know what we're doing or people are just not going to be listing at all and then waiting for friends, waiting for network groups to be able to come on. And so, as I've been saying, the issue is really that they've made these affixes going into the new expansion to be more punishing and to force more precise gameplay upon people before they're going to be able to progress. But the game itself doesn't do much to teach you how to use these resources effectively. The difference between using a damage reduction cooldown before a hit, after a hit, in preparation of that damage is very, very different, and you know that for hand as a healer the amount of kicks stops interrupts required and teaching people about how direct interrupts really are working well you need to use add-ons for these things you need to use third-party resources to make sure you're tracking and understanding which of the mobs in eight different dungeons are priorities understanding what they do the downsides of what they do and it's incredibly brutal it's a huge skill check for people going into it and the game doesn't really teach you those things so what should they be doing instead? Well, I really think, especially when it comes to interrupts, that they should be removing that direct interrupt where you need to actually use a wind shear, use a kick in order to stop a volley cast from going off, and that you should be able to use those AOE crowd control abilities once again. I think the crowd control has gotten really out of hand, or the requirements have gotten really out of hand in dungeons, and the punishment is razor high when you're in these pub groups. You can't communicate all of these things unless you are in voice. A lot of players don't always want to get in voice, don't always want to communicate every single little thing that they're doing. They don't have that level of organization. 
and it very quickly becomes needed as you're doing dungeons past 12s. So yeah, sort of forcing it upon people makes it a lot harder. I don't really know why they don't have an affix which is actually accelerating the cast of mobs. Now hear me out, I know that sounds insane, but if you have a mob that has a cast time of a second and a half, for example, why is it not like a five second cast at like keys below six? And then at six, it becomes what you would call the regular level of a second and a half. Why do we not have like insanely slow casts? In um, because that wouldn't teach you the mechanics of the mythic you're going into, basically. Because you'd go into it expecting yeah, yeah. one thing, then be blindsided by a whole new mechanic you've never faced before. As he's saying. Mm -hmm. I don't think he knows what how to improve well, if that makes sense. I don't think, just judging from this, I don't think he understands what people need to be able to get better at well. Yeah, I know what he's asking for. He's asking for a trainer for interrupts where people have more time to realize they need to do it. But yeah, if you but as a double edged sword, though, if you have the mob standing there, like he was saying, if it if it's supposed to have a second and a half cast time, but then it takes five seconds to cast it on the easier versions, then you're not going to pay no mind to the fact that you need to interrupt it most of the time and you're not you're just gonna it, the mob's not gonna be doing any damage either it's just gonna be there for five seconds without doing anything so there the healers don't get used to the damage increases in those regards the tanks don't get used to the uh mitigations they have to run in those same regards because you're slowing the every you're slowing one function down to where you get idle ads doing nothing for five seconds yeah and it could teach people how to interrupt, sure, but it's going to lessen the uh, learning of the other roles that you got to do. I mean, my opinion on it is like you can learn to interrupt in heroic, man. You don't even need to be in a higher tier to learn how to interrupt. You can learn it in any. You could be in a normal. Like I interrupt things in normal fucking dungeons. You know, when I'm just leveling up a character, I interrupt them. Yeah. I'll interrupt most things even in normal dungeons. Never mind if we're going up to mythic. Like if you're not interrupting in the lower dungeons, like that's a mechanic they meant to learn all the way through. Like you know, like I know WoW doesn't tell you yeah. tell you to do this, but. You no, know, but that's also the thing, like, we've said, man, going back to 14, like, they teach you this from the very first, um, like, the very first base game, never mind the expansions going up and through, but I imagine the mechanics get more difficult, but, yeah. It's a steady climb yep. the entire time. Yep, and I think that's what we're sorely lacking, they're lacking that new player experience there. Like, like right now, well, consists of three different, well, well, basically three different end games. So you have the, he, you have the delves, you have the raids, and you have the mythic plus dungeons, and that's really all I can think of. That's end game for WoW right now. So that's all there is, unless you count PvP, which some people do. Okay, count that PvP. Is. Like, so say four, including most people don't play PvP. I would assume. So that's a, that's a decent chunk, I'd imagine. But I imagine most of the end game is the PvE is the <laughs> PvE content. So yeah, I mean. So, <laughs> to be fair, in WoW, PvP is actually fairly popular, especially the arena, which is the one that gets you your gladiator mounts and stuff like that, that you can only get once per expansion, and after they're gone, after the expansion's over, you can't get them anymore. Okay, yeah. So, gotcha. yeah, the, the, there is a pretty big scene for arena uh, PvP in WoW, which is just five on five most of the time, so. I gotcha. So yeah, I say well, I say PvP is pretty popular. I'm like, obviously, I I don't know numbers. I'm just talking from like experience at this point. But um, yeah. Um, for everything else, like the fact that your whole end game is three different things, and if you don't enjoy any of them, what do you do? Do you just quit? Do you just think, well, this game is not for me, or I just wasted like forty dollars or whatever it is on an expansion? Or... Well, that or you. Hope that somebody finds a way to talk you into figuring something out. Yeah. Maybe you again, meet somebody along the way, but... Yeah, but, you, but, but loads of people don't have people they, like, really speak to. Like no. me, in particular, like, I don't really, like... I don't like having a lot of people, like, around me all the time. Like, I don't mind talking to people, but at the same time, being in large groups on Discord, like, really gives me headaches and really fucks with me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So... Like he was saying, you need to be in a voice chat just to be able to get through certain kinds of content. And I'm just like, yes, yeah. I agree, you do. But not everybody needs or wants to even do that to begin with. So. Mm -hmm. Now, let's yeah. just be realistic. I mean, there's always going to be some kind of content in any MMO. At some, at some point, regardless where that point is, 
there is a point that voice chat is almost nece- uh, ne- almost a necessity to do something. Yep. But it's where that point is, is mm-hmm. the question most of the time. That's true. Because I don't know where that point is in well, but it's basically almost at the cusp of mythic. Plus, so. Yeah, what, 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 what he's saying there, it's in the high, um, the double digits of mythic pluses. In 14, it's in current content, savage sometimes, or yeah. definitely the ultimate stuff, which is completely optional anyway. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if you want to clear it, you will need to be able to communicate a yeah. lot faster than time. Um, does like the savage content reflect on item level or gear in 14 at all? Savage does, but the ultimates don't. But there are some people that are capable. You can do savage without voice. It just makes it incredible a lot easier because all you got to do is just know what changes in the fight, see it, and there, and there are some people in Savage even on fourteen that that won't even force you to go watch a video for it. There are some groups that form for Savage that want to see and do it from a blind perspective and learn as they go. That would, that would uh, be me quite literally. Rather. That's how I prefer to learn and, when I'm doing MMO stuff. So. And then there's a. Uh, you won't ever really find I mean, you can find it a little bit in WoW, but most of the time, WoW wants you to be able to recite a four- or five-minute video about what the boss is going to be doing and what you're responsible for on it. Before they, I mean, that, that's just what way most raids and WoW go with their leads. And in a way, in WoW, unfortunately, you almost have to do it that way. Yeah, because they if you didn't have DB, I would say you, you even have to go out of the out of the game to get an add-on to tell you when your what your timers on your boss moves are going to be, so you know what's going well, on. Well, yeah, everyone has DBM, so you know they have like they get told when to move, they get told when to interrupt, they get told when to do the majority of the stuff they do. What would happen yeah. if you if you removed all add-ons from one? The whole system would break, man. So. That or and they'd have to find a way to. Uh, reevaluate it and put stuff in the game to show it more than what they do yeah. now. They should. But anyways, let's finish this video, I guess. Well, because I've got like yes. three minutes and a bit left, so. Yes. Like a five second cast at like keys below six, and then at six, it becomes what you would call the regular level of a second and a half. Why do we not have like insanely slow casts in earlier level dungeons to give people time to see like, oh, that mob is casting. Oh, it might be lethal. Oh, I have to take time because Really, as players are learning, their reaction times are slower. They're distracted by other things. They're still learning their specs. They're still understanding what's going on. <laughs> Just having some beers and hanging out with friends. Why is that not actually allowing you to have a little bit more of an on-ramp? And they say, oh, okay, like, I don't know, past six or something. It's the regular sort of cast that they have going on. Better alerts or information really in the game itself to tell you about like the strengths or understanding of how you can use defensives. Because, yeah, you could use at a defensive like astral shift which is a 40 percent damage reduction but if you use it at a proper time it how does he have like sixty thousand something subs and doesn't know how to use his microphone yet? that's absolutely crazy can you hear the little pops and shit that's happening when he's talking i can hear really a couple of fucking them, yeah. distracting man at a defensive like astral shift which is a 40 percent damage care, reduction man. but if I you know. use it at a proper time it's basically wasted right you know you could mitigate half of a hit or it just means he's got his microphone two turned up too loud that's all it means so. the rest of it or you're already low health or something like that it's really really wasted i think health in general needs to be a lot higher to give healers time to respond to what the burst damage is really doing to the dungeons and i think we've already seen really big swings in overall healer output in just how you're playing one healer versus another and that also plays a really big role in like how healer balance is going to be working, what sort of agency that healers have to heal through mistakes and make up for those mistakes that you can continue sort of progressing through those dungeons. I think what we have right now is a really like simple but brutal way of teaching people to play the game and to force upon them to get better. And for those who are not going to be as comfortable with it or don't have the time or desire to be going through lots of third party sites and research and understanding all of this because it's a freaking video game. 
<laughs> it's crazy complicated. I don't think that they need to just con like chop it down to five button rotations by any means. But you have to admit that WoW has gotten incredibly, incredibly bloated with all of these resources. And when they design around it, it becomes even more challenging for people to get on and learn. But hey, this is just my opinion throughout this video. So let me know what you guys think. But also, like, what challenges have you been experiencing throughout this Mythic Plus season? What I've really seen so far is it seems like there's less groups willing to start posting up in LFG as they start progressing in dungeons. And I think that it's only going to get more and more exclusive, especially at keys over 12s, to find groups and find that sort of community, which makes WoW a great game to play. And having so much coordination needed in dungeons more than ever before, I think also makes it even harder for new people to start getting into the game and understanding the game and keep having new players coming into the system to keep it vibrant and fresh. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching and huge love to our patrons who make all of this content possible. If you'd like to join and get access to new videos, be sure to check it out in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll catch you all next time. Okay, sick. So yeah, in like a, in, in response to what he was saying, um, what do you think? What do you think of his opinions? What do you think of like? Well, the, when it comes to his opinion, opinions, the only thing I can overly agree with with him on is yes, WoW needs a better way of conveying information to people about what they are demanding the players to do and adapt to. They need a better way of introduce teaching mechanics that are going i mean you can't teach every single mechanic but you can at least teach the con the, the fundamentals of what they are yeah and that would be far more than what they kind of do right now i mean like for me specifically i would love to have a mythic content where you have a learning dungeon so like say you say you want to do a mythic six but you don't want to go with a group that's going to get pissed at you or kick you from the group if you don't perform it to say if you could have a mock dungeon where you could choose it to like go from mythic one to up to mythic 10 with it and be able to go mm -hmm. into that as like a not solo but like you know you can go in with a group of people or people who want to learn and there's no punishment like if you die you die it doesn't mean anything you're not not capping a key or whichever way you know you're not getting the key in time or and you just learn the mechanics you just go through and you go through there a few times and you learn the mechanics properly you understand how it works before you go into proper live content i think that would be a very good step between because it allows you to well, learn without the consequences well i can expand on what you're saying there and just solve the entire problem if they would do it this way and that's they already got dungeons that you can run with ai party members all they had to do is make it where you queue in for the mythic with what keystone that you might have in your inventory you run it with the ai with the uh under that sort of under those conditions with that key but if you do it with the ai you're told up front that you're not going to be able to get any of the loot for it and it doesn't burn the key that just allows you to perpetually run that same place over and over and learn everything you need to know running it with an ai group that should be able to be programmed in a way in such a way that it uh functions like it does already yeah i mean i mean like with it being bot it wouldn't be exact it would be obviously there'd be certain things that wouldn't be the same as what real players would do potentially but you'd have a roundabout experience of like what to expect obviously like once you go into live content once you go with real people it'll be a little bit changed but not to a major degree you would at least understand like when you go into stone you'd understand that you need to move you need to break the you need, you need to break the little pillars that way so you know you need to do all the things that make that dungeon that dungeon so yeah with that, which ads need to be interrupted because of fears and yep. all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could easily, like I said, you could easily just run that stuff with an AI with the key you got. Or why don't have it well, just add like things above the heads that say, I fear people or like, you know, like something that means that, you know, so you know exactly what you're meant to target. And you know, as so I say, this is a fear mm -hmm. monster. This is a boss. This is like, you know, like it mm -hmm. all has its own little label that's somewhere above its head that you know exactly what it is. Instead of having to guess or not know exactly what is what. I think that's what a lot well, of people struggle with. Like, it's hard to know what's what without running the dungeon a yeah. hundred times first. So. But um, the ultimate rant's answer is going to be to why they don't do this is because they know someone's going to do it for them in an add-on. That, that's the real answer, long and short of it, that they won't do it. It's because they already know someone's going to do it. 
I know, but that isn't, the third but that, but that isn't an answer. I know, but that isn't the right answer. That isn't like a thing you should ever do as a game developer. Like, you know. It even, ain't, but that is unfortunately the answer. Yes, I know. You're right. It's that people will work in add-ons if they need to, but at the same time, do we really need to have, like, an add-on for, like, we have add-ons for everything, man, from gathering to fucking dungeons to all that shit in between, right? Like, why can't WoW just add get... all this information into the game? Like, how much better of a game would it be if WoW had this, like, already? Then the add-ons just went on top of what's already there. It would be better, uh, obviously. Anything that they can do to make the game self-contained would make it better than what it is. But right now, when you play WoW, let's say if you play WoW as base WoW without any add-ons, you're only playing half the game because you got to have all the add-ons to be on par with anyone else. Yeah, because everyone else is using DBM, they're using damage meters, they're using other stuff to kind of make the dungeons easier to give more information about what they're doing, or, you know, loads yeah. of different points of, like, um, information that you don't have if you don't even know what add-ons are. Yeah. So, I don't know. I guess it's why, um, in my opinion, like, it's why WoW is struggling, in my opinion, right now. Like, especially because of their main content. Like, imagine making a whole endgame of three different things. That doesn't seem like a very good end game to me. It feels like it's very lackluster. Like they're missing a lot of stuff they could potentially be putting into the game. Yeah, I uh, I'm not too sold on it. Any, uh, I mean, like I said, I was near the beginning of this ordeal that we were doing. I was a little bit blinded at first by what they were doing with the story because I was interested in um. But, you know, the Zalatas stuff, I was wanting to see where that would go, where, where it still may go. Yeah, I mean, but... the story's actually interesting. I, I'm actually interested in the Zalatas story. You know, the actual, just, like, campaign is interesting. Mm-hmm. But as for everything else, it's like, as you're saying, like, it's uh, you got blinded by certain bits of it, so. Yeah, and uh, it, didn't, it didn't take me too awful long to realize what I was doing, but, I mean... I think the biggest thing that got me is when they do a, just do a new bar palace on heroic the way that I've been trying to do it or was trying to do it anyway. Yeah. Of trying to go in and fight the brood twister, which is the one with the eggs. Yeah. And having so many people that are there, and not a single one of those people can remember from one pool to the next for whatever reason what we're doing why we're doing it and it's because there's no way that it's conveyed in a very concise way from the game itself it uh, we it, it's left to player invention as far as how that that's handled yeah it's down and, to dbm for the most part from what i've seen in my experience of doing um new about palace i've never done i think i've done like one heroic or something to that to maybe yeah. two heroics, but, but I'll, I'll say yeah. the egg part of it isn't even handled by dbm all DBM tells people is they can go and break an egg, but it's human invention on the spot that figures out why we're there, who's what, what we're needing to do. And it never changes. Don't get me wrong. It mm-hmm. never changes from one attempt to the next in terms of what we're, how we're supposed to execute it. Yeah. But I guess it's also but, where you are expecting us to know and a split second decision where to go. Like, cause if you, you're on a split second decision, do you forget, the whole mechanic and like you know you know we're humans we're, mm. not, we're always going to make mistakes in some way or another you can't expect perfection every single time but at the same time especially with the eggs it can only take one person to fuck it up to literally wipe a high level already so and that's all it does take yeah which i can get that like he was saying if they want precision that's fine mm-hmm. but there's other ways to do that other than leaving that one option open to chance the counter to my argument is someone saying yeah they can fuck up an egg but if your group knows it and your group's good enough they can handle the mutated egg when it hatches yes you can do that but if you're not ready to be doing that and you're freaking out about it that it's going to happen yeah, and but that's also putting more mutated... strain on the tanks as well because you know everything yeah. that pops gets pulled to the tanks so Tanks are already having to tank the boss, they're already having to make sure that it's in the right place so that it's not, you know, so they can break the eggs in the proper place and it's not too bad. And, you know, all of that yeah. stuff. 
and it's not fun to tank one of them damn uh, spiders if it's been uh, mutated by uh, that stuff on it. If you're not the one that does the hatching, if it hatches the spiders, that's not a good day for a tank most of the time. No. That, that, that makes the damage on fighting one spider almost like fighting two of them gotcha. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. So, yeah, they, they do need a lot more educational parts to that game to teach people what they're wanting to do with it. Yeah. As and long a, as the game has been around and not have, have ever had them, really. No. Like I said, it's like one, it's like one of the oldest MMOs out there. It's not the oldest, obviously, but... No. You know, like it, it's one of the oldest MMOs out there, and they still don't have this figured out. They have, they're literally, as you say, leaving it down to people to make add-ons that make that fix their game for them, rather than fixing it themselves. Like, they put all this time into making an expansion, but they don't think, well... Should we add some things in game that tell us, like that tell the players what to do? Nah, we'll leave it to them to make that shit, man. We don't need to do that. Like it's it's lazy. And stuff. that's probably what that's uh, that conversation has probably happened a few times too, to where people will come in and say, "Well, do we need to explain this in some way?" It's like, no, somebody else is not going to. Uh, someone's going to do it for us. Yeah, for free. We it's we like, don't need to waste time on it. It's also like he was saying that, like um, that like even that he was talking about how the devs even make their mechanics around the expectation that everybody already has these things you know they already have the yeah. add-ons in place to do that so the fact that blizzard devs like make their content around content that isn't even theirs is absolutely yeah. insane as well yeah that's uh that is what it is and it's sad that that's the case but yeah Yes, I was expecting WoW to be better, you know, because obviously it's a very popular game, should we say. It is better than it was, but it's still not make it good. You mm, know? No, it's, it's not. Like, um, just in my short couple of months playing it, like, the moment I switched to 14, I saw how bad WoW actually is in comparison. And I'm only in the very beginning of 14. I'm not even anywhere close yeah. towards Endgame here. And you haven't had very many challenges in 14. I mean, the only real challenge, I don't mean to just give a review of what you've done right now, but uh, I'm just going to say it anyway on this small bit. The only thing that's really give you a significant challenge in 14 right now is one particular class quest, and you died one time to ultimate weapon. Yeah, pretty much. You died to the final boss of the first story. Yeah. It's not a big deal because obviously you can res one time, so it's not that like, 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 like even like as simple as something as simple as reses aren't caps in fourteen, which is like, yeah, I think I think that's a nice. Yeah, I, mean, I, I so. could keep bringing you back up time and time again if I just had mm-hmm. the ability to do it. Oh yeah, I mean I saw loads of people no dying way. during ultimate weapon. I saw like people were dying with left, right, and center during that thing. So yeah, I mean I'm just saying that that that's the only and and. It's only because one. I mean, there's a lot that goes on in that fight, but it's oh, yeah. it's the de- I, I hope that you could agree that here's the ultimate point I'm getting at. The death against Ultima could be considered fair. Yeah, because you could have, even though you didn't see how it was going to go at that time, if you had known where the you know. What sort of, uh, you know, the circles or whatever, where you need it, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. The void zones we don't stand in. If you'd seen it a little, a few seconds earlier, realized that that's what it was, you wouldn't have died. Exactly. But still, we still got so, our first kill on our first try, so either yeah, way, we still managed to do it, so. I just feel that the, the deaths that we suffer when we do suffer them in that one are more fair than, yep. uh, Let's talk about once again Nuabar Palace, for example, where it's uh, everything can go swimmingly up until the court, where it's the healer's job to make sure that the raid doesn't die anymore because yeah. they have to do something very yeah, they, specific that requires yeah, people they to, have to cooperate. dispel things and everything. Yeah, I know what you mean. And and not only dispel things, they got to rely on the person that has that dispellable debuff to run to stand next to the boss before they're dispelled. So not only does the healer have to do that in order to pass the mechanic, but the idiot with the thing has to move to where they need to be before that can even become a thing to begin with. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Maybe it's just 
I don't know. I feel like the Rhubarb Palace, it's fun in places, but there's certain... I guess they made those last, like, few bosses, like, that way for a reason, right? Well, the people who really want to go through the raid wall, like... Because, like, to get the first six is easy to get the first, you know, the daily unlock... Or the weekly unlocks. It's a lot easier to get those first, like, few bosses down to get to those unlocks. Then you get to the last, yeah. like, three bosses, I think it is, and then it gets to... Where you really have those mechanics come into play, where you have to follow them, and it's, like... Like one's down to healers, one's down to doing webs, one's down. Then the last one is down to that end mechanic where you have to go run up and go two different ways, and you know. So, yeah, um, I mean, it, it could be better than what it is in a lot of ways. It's just that we're not in. It's a bad uh, environment for new people. It's yeah, not the greatest environment for veterans, realistically, but it's still very bad for new people right now. Oh yeah, just look at how many mechanics we've seen just in um in a realm reborn, where we're thinking this is for this is the now these are the mechanics in WoW now, and this was back like many 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 years before this expansion ever existed. So yeah, so and we got plenty more to see. Yeah, plenty more to see. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this in terms of like what we're talking about towards Mythic specifically? Or? Uh, when it comes to Mythic specifically, the only thing I'm going to say is, because I touched on it slightly, during uh, Battle for Azeroth, that was probably the worst overall Mythic season ever for uh, Mythic Pluses, to where a lot of the affixes that we had to do per key were so unbalanced to where if one thing went wrong at any time, you were dead. Mm -hmm. we, it's nowhere near that bad now. I mean, yes, there's uh, problems, there's complications, but Mythic is actually sadly in a very decent place right now compared to where I have seen it before. Yeah. That still doesn't make it a great position, no, no. but it's not unplayable. Let's just make the, uh, I hope you could agree with that. I mean, it like is Mythic not is like unplayable. The... It's like my favorite part of the world content. Like, you know, in terms of like, you know, if I had a choice of what I would rather play, I'd rather go Mythic Plus all, all the time. So, yeah. Now, it can, uh, I don't, people would say I probably shouldn't talk about it because I uh, haven't played all the affixes, but um, I can say that I, if I wanted to bad enough, I could probably power my way through it in a reasonable amount of time and dedication to it. That's because it's not in a horrible that part of the game is not in a horrible place right now. Yeah. But the things that they want you to do in there is the problem. It's not the content, it's the external requirements that are being added into what they expect of the player. What do you mean the external requirements? Like all the interrupts, the healers having interrupts, the things that we have to do. There's nothing wrong with the DPS classes doing interrupts because they've always had them. It's always been something that they've done. Tanks have always had interrupts. That's their thing. But healers shouldn't have to do that in this particular game uh, because that's not something that we've really ever had to worry much about in the past. Makes I mean, sense. <laughs> there were a handful of healers throughout the entirety of the game's lifespan that could interrupt. Paladin, for example, because the Paladin has a DPS spec and it has a tank spec, so it does keep some of its moves from both of them and the interrupt being one of them. But the other healers shouldn't have to do all that. I don't I think. mean, the healers even are, the are already shouldn't. doing so much, to be honest. Like, the healers are already doing so many different things it's, already that, like, having to interrupt is like a whole other thing. Because generally, as a healer, you're not even focusing damage. You know, you're like, normally you don't even focus damage that much as a healer. I know you can, but. Generally speaking, you can, but it's not something that you need to worry about in this game. If we were talking about 14, I'd be having a whole different conversation. Oh, yeah, but in 14, um, we wouldn't be having this conversation to begin with because I imagine the end game is much more streamlined than whatever. Um, uh, wow, sis, so yeah, and I'm more talking about just about the what the healers are responsible for. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's just a uh fact of the game i mean it, it's just plain and plain as day it's a fact that healers have to do damage in that game yeah. but as you've seen play in the game the tanks have so many ways to make it to where the healers can do that damage without dying 
that because you have what like six defensive buffs probably yeah at any Something given like time that. yeah as long as you don't sort of spam them obviously you'll be fine you can always have yeah. a defensive buff uh, for the most part so i mean the 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 it's a it's a different environment, which I, mm -hmm. I know we shouldn't really compare the two, at least not yet. We might get to that at some point in the future. That's going to be a future would be a good. I think like once I get to the end, once I'm into the end game, once I've played it for a bit, I think that's what I'll yeah. the best time to really compare the end games. Because obviously, like I played well for like end game wise a few months. So once I get to that point in fourteen, I think that'll be a very interesting discussion. Maybe find a video between it potentially if we can, or at least I'm sure there's somebody out there that's talked about it. Yeah, that probably is. It wouldn't surprise me, knowing content creators. And do you have anything to add? You asked me. Um, For me, no. I like, This video was like talking more of the very high level end rather than what I would be focusing on. Because for me, it's about going between, like you said before, like going between heroic and mythic. That's the point where you, that's the sticking point. Because obviously, like we said, they have to go through raiding generally together. And if you don't want to go through raiding, you have to go through delving. And if you don't like delving, you quit the game. That's basically in my opinion, that's like kind of, I don't see another way to um really structure that content any better. Like, you know, in terms of like, or how to explain that content any better. Like they need like a, I don't know, like a heroic plus or like a mythic light or, you know, something to, like I said, something to learn. Something that helps people get into that content to begin with. But then again, yeah. without all the extra add-ons and everything else that you need to use in order to do that content. Because WoW doesn't provide that. I think it just makes the whole content in general bad. Like, because obviously, if you've never played another MMO that's similar to well, you're not going to see the other side of the spectrum. You're not going to see how much better or worse off you are without obviously making that contrast and opinion on that point. So it's like a it's a lose lose situation because a lot of the player base would just be like, well, you don't know what you're talking about, or you've only played the game for X amount of time, or, you know, they're like, oh, you're just not good at the game. I'm like, or oh, no, it's just a. For me, the thing that really kills mythics and raids and everything else is the player base, the toxicity, the people who are complete assholes towards everybody. And, you know, I think overall, regardless of anything that's killing mythic or killing WoW or killing raids, it would be the toxicity, in my opinion. That's all. Yeah, because that's a lot of that. And it don't seem to be anything that's going away in that game anytime soon. No. Because it hasn't went yet, and it's been there for a while, and it'll probably be there for until the game is officially over with. Yeah, it probably will be, but then again, they'll probably make a WoW 2 and a WoW 3, and a, you know, it's a cash cow, man. Just look at the $90 yeah. amount that got for this. That's, an, that's like the prime example of a cash cow. But still, anyways, no, I think I don't, yeah. know. I, I don't think there's anything else. This video wasn't exactly what I expected, but at the same time, it was interesting. I mean... It's not what we, we see. It's a weird situation. Unlike the last one we did, where we could just easily disagree with what Aol he was saying. Uh, this one, he had points that we could disagree with, and he had a few points that were actually okay to make. Yep. I mean, it, it it is. I mean, you'd be an idiot not to say that. Yes, WoW needs some training material in the game for certain things that it yep. does not have. Um. But what that would take and what that would have to be is something that would require a little bit more research than what any of us have done into it right now to figure out how you could potentially fix I mean, that in a way that... Yeah, definitely. I was just saying, because like, even if Wild says you need these add-ons in order to do this content, you no, know, if it just recommends add-ons for you, even, and that's lazy as fuck, but, you know, it's something at the very least. You know, if it, even yeah. if it recommends downloading DBM or something else in between and, like, you know, to get you used to having add-ons that help you. Because they could even in build, like, build them into the game. So, you know, instead of having DBM in, like, a separate thing which you need to install, you know, like Curse Forge or whatever, you just have them built into yeah. the game and you just turn them on. So Yeah, that's the easy way to do it. Yep. And, I guess it, I it mean, does mean, or not stealing people to it, but, like, you know, getting the licensing material for those things as well but you know that's all i mean cool, to be so. fair since they got it to where it's working with i don't know i don't i don't want to say anything about that i could be wholly wrong about that i don't know how add-ons are viewed in uh that world so i'm not gonna we're gonna ignore that start of that mm -hmm. yeah but but yeah if they had a good trainer in the game to do train people for things that would be great it would. um but they're not going to do that because 
they've never done it and they probably think that they're too good of a con- that, that, that their stuff's too good to do it that's probably the truth unfortunately that's some bullshit on that but if they think their stuff is too good to do that they are living in a fucking dream world that's not well people buy it so i mean that's all that matters to it in, in the end for them yeah I know. it'd be different if people didn't buy it but people are going to buy what they throw out but that's i mean people can say that about anything yeah that they i mean well there's a fan base but i know everything has like, i mean even how... like even like even line has a fan base man so like, there's everything that has fan bases it just depends because imagine how yeah, much bigger I... wow would be with all those extra fixes that we just talked about in so how many hundreds of thousands of dollars do you think that ninety dollar amount's gotten them so you far? mean millions of dollars we're not talking about i was trying to be dollars. i was trying to be generous no, because it's a ninety dollar amount. Even if like a thousand people buy it, man, you're getting like a lot of fucking money from it. So, and there's a lot more than a thousand mm. people that have bought that amount. Just judging well, from a dollar gold when that would... when that thing like first released. So. Mm-hmm. Thousand people would only be ninety thousand dollars. That's, that's not true. even a hundred. That's not even a grand. Yeah, but literally, there's like more than a thousand, way more than a thousand people that have bought it. <laughs> but still, um... say say if like. Let's say at the very least, if ten thousand people bought it, you know, like, and I'm sure it's even more than that. Oh yeah, I'm well, sure. okay, yeah, uh, ten thousand probably would be the million mark. Yeah, I think, easy. or nine hundred k, one of the two. It's very close to it, but I imagine out of all the player base, so like, like they they're looking for their cash cap, like they're looking for their top five percent of the audience who have enough money to buy a ninety, the equivalent of a brand new game and a bit on the amount, right? So, yeah, for no reason. Yeah, I know. We have another like appearance said, yeah. of a cat as well. Oh, well, the cat mm. is on the camera. Yes. She's trying to get attention. She wants me to go feed her. Well, I, uh, I think, uh, like you said, this wasn't quite what we expected it to be because it does have good points to it to go along with all the bad points when people start talking about being a. Uh, uh, picking and choosing your people that you are, you know, what was the exact word he, phrase he used again for that? Oh, I, f- I forgot the exact term he used, but what was it? Um... The one that got, the, it, you commented on, and it was about, about selecting people. I know. Exactly I can't remember. I can't remember the, the, the exact name he used. I don't know. I yeah, I know. I mean, it's it's right there, man. Yeah, it's right there. Right. Thing. Um, it doesn't matter. It's some obnoxious term anyway. But yeah. He used. That that concept now that don't 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 like, like when he said it ever. I was like because like when he said it I was like what the fuck did this motherfucker just like like that was literally in my head that was literally the um first um, like thought that came into my yeah. head when I heard it so so I mean yeah. even with all the stuff like that then with the good things he had mm-hmm. it's weird that we can agree and disagree in some capacity but I guess that's a good, that's the point of this type of video I think is to not yeah. divide too much. No, this is more um, an opinion piece where it's like, you know, it's, it's his take on how he plays mm-hmm. the game. So, because he plays in a more yeah. higher level content, you know, because he's more in the top ranges of like um, Mythic Plus. So, he has a different like, perspective than what I do as somebody who just started, as, or as somebody that you do who mostly does raid t- st- style content when you are playing Master. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I am glad that he does, even as a higher level player, think that we did. Obviously, like, we, I'm going to go back to it again anyway about the fact we need uh more training stuff in the game yeah I and what we have i 100 percent agree i mean if we added that and they added like extra stuff to make it easier well not i don't seem i don't mean easier i mean like easier to get into easier for players to learn and like that type of thing or even like i said like you know like a training thing where you can go into those high level uh, mythic pluses or those high level raids and learn the mechanics man how amazing would a mm. new bar palace mythic but with bots be where you could learn every mechanic and you could learn what the fuck you meant to be doing. Yeah, and all you'd have to do is just turn the loot off and make it to where people just knew that going into it that way was a learning thing. Exactly. That's all you'd have to do. Pretty much. Uh, it's, it's not even coding by the devs. When the devs already have that system in place, it's just tweaking it. Yeah. So. But, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. In my opinion, WoW's in a bad you. place right now. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I think so, too. At least with that stuff. Yep. But it's gonna. It, it, but it's the player base too. It's not just the uh, 
development cycle it's the people that play the game that are not helping it any really yeah no that's why that was part of my point as well you know that the toxicity as yeah. much as because um, imagine if like well was a friendly place to be where people would help you through content you don't quite get say if you died like oh you didn't interrupt that or you didn't do this or like instead of like so because so, like some people will see you die and kick you from a from a party you know, which is like yeah it's absolutely crazy i've sometimes. seen it i've seen yeah. it happen it's happened to me a time or two i think actually it's happened to most of us and i was healing yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I died kidding. healing and got thrown out. I uh, wasn't even doing nothing. Well, that's crazy. Anyways, I think that's all I've got to say about this. Anyway, that's about all I got too. So, do you want to you want to take us home since I yeah. brought us here? Yeah, sure. Anyways, anyways, that's been our thoughts on the Mythic Plus content, at least in this specific video. It's not exactly what we want to talk about, but I think we got some interesting, like a differing perspective on everything. I think that's like most important thing. I think first, it's about trying to um trying to find different opinions things we can talk about and disagree about and like you know try to find fixes and things like obviously i don't expect any devs to look at anything that we do but even just in the wider in the wider community sense of it all if i'm like obviously kai is a more veteran player has been playing since like the very beginning of well and i'm like yeah. a very new player now as i played a little bit in the original bits up to up to cataclysm but recently i've taken what was it like 12 years off or something crazy i don't know maybe even more than that but you might as well just forgot everything you'd ever learned to begin basically, with. Basically, yeah. I had to relearn the whole game, basically. So it's from two completely different differing perspectives on our parts. But yeah, yeah. I think, like like I like we said, like, I've moved to 14. Kai is basically moving to 14 as well. And that shows how what we think of WoW right now at the end. But yeah, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Um, I've been Mako. That has been Kai. And we'll see you in the very next episode. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Yep, see y'all around later.